Hello, everyone. Once again, we are accompanied by two of our lovely leaders, Jean Aliva, whose spirit connects effortlessly with everyone, bringing a sense of peace and understanding to every interaction. And Jeffrey Morlock, who possesses such profound knowledge that it seems to radiate from him. <laughs> The topic today is embracing challenges. Even though many books have been written on this subject and numerous inspirational speakers have covered it, the importance of this message cannot be overstated. When uh, leaders whom we respect and believe in address this topic, their words have a unique impact on us. It may be just the right moment for the material to truly sink in and resonate with us. Embracing challenges is an essential part of growth and hearing this message repeatedly helps reinforce its significance in our lives. Our CEO, Mr. Ash Mufara, quite frequently emphasizes the critical importance of embracing challenges as a pathway to growth. He highlights that real progress often occurs when we step outside our comfort zones and face com discomfort head on. According to his perspective, growth is not achieved by remaining in familiar and comfortable situations, but rather through, um, through overcoming obstacles and per, uh, pushing past limitations. When we embrace challenges, we invite um, opportunities for development and transformation. It's in those uncomfortable moments when we're stretched beyond our usual boundaries that we discover our true potential. By willingly stepping into the unknown and tackling difficulties, we not only enhance our skills, but also build resilience and adaptability. Our CEO's insights remind us that discomfort is not something to avoid, but an essential part of a journey towards personal and professional advancement. And now we ask, ask our amazing leaders to enlighten us with their input and knowledge. How about starting with Ms. Jean Aliba? Thank you for being here, both of you. Thank you so much, Minu. It's great to see you, Jeffrey. It's great to be here once again. I This topic could not be more perfect because Minu sent some talking points over to us today, and I had a crazy day. <laughs> I had a lot of things coming at me. I had things going not as planned. I was having to juggle some things and uh, some stresses at home and all sorts of, and I thought how perfect. There is one side of me that would have wanted to sit and prepare and really be mindful and thoughtful about it, but that's not the way life is all the time. Yeah. Certainly not the way our CEO has his days. He has things thrown at him constantly. And so I thought it's perfect because I had to get my head in the game. I had to do, I had to do these things that we're going to talk about today, including shifting my mindset from frazzled and thinking about other things to this topic, this so important topic from you know uh, being being resilient, you know, um taking a moment to breathe, being kind to myself instead of getting more and more stressed and worried about bringing something good to the table today. You know, I've, if I 
feel, you know, there's a lot of pressure we put on ourselves if we're not fully on our game and we feel like, you know, a responsibility to bring really good content and especially, and Jeffrey, I know you relate to this, bringing the right energy, right? I feel a great responsibility. If I'm coming, you know, like all chaotic and frazzled, you'll feel that. And that in, and you'll not only feel compassion for me, you know, it'll take your energy away, but it'll put, it, it just won't bring the right energy to this, this conversation. So I, th I just wanted to start with that little bit that life doesn't always give you that perfect, you know, scenario to tackle the, 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 uh, the challenges of, of your day to day. And, and so these tools that we're going to be talking about today are really critical so that we can face we can face anything that comes our way and take a moment to breathe, recenter ourselves and come from a place of responding instead of reacting and all of that. So I just wanted to start with those, those few thoughts. Thank you so much, Minu. Beautiful. As you're saying that, it, I, it helped me drop my shoulders and take a deep breath. So breathing is very important. We'll pass it on to Jeff, please. Well, thank you. Uh, it's likewise very good to see you and your, your, your being here is appreciated, Gene. Thank you. And thank you, Manu, for uh, setting this thing up and giving us a an opportunity for the three of us to kind of step out of our daily routine and out of the things that we normally focus on so that we can pull some good things in and then put some good things out. And you're absolutely right. Uh, Gene, if, if we go into a situation, whatever that situation is, whatever we're feeling, what we're feeling is going out into that situation. So we can exact, we can make it worse or we can make it better just by how we are and whether or not we have some coherence within ourselves and whether or not we're aligned with ourselves as well. Now, I'm assuming that the first topic here after listening to Gene was shifting and, and mindset and that whole kind of a bailiwick thing. And I agree. <laughs> you know, I've been telling my family and, and many others for many, many years that life happens when you have other things planned. And that's just the way it goes. <laughs> you know, you never expect things to happen the way they do or unfold the way they do. And seldom do they unfold the way you really expect them to. But if we can learn from uh, either on the one side, failures and setbacks, or on the other, successes, and, and uh, processes that have been beneficial, then embracing that whole spectrum of mindset allows us to uh, analyze our mistakes and uh, even our successes. And it helps us to, in a way, I guess, apply whatever we've learned because we take it in and then we digest it. And then as we act, it comes back out of us. So we're able to apply those lessons that we've learned for others, to others in our future endeavors, which is exactly what we're doing here. Uh, a lot of times, uh, and listening to you, uh, Manu, you were uh, mentioning Mr. Mufara, so I'm assuming that we've got a little bit of a bent here toward on passive and toward on uh, Mr. Mufara with this whole thing, and that shifting of our mindset is absolutely something that he does on a day in and day out basis, right? And he does it rather innovatively. Um, which simply means that as you shift with an innovative mindset, so to speak, an approach, it just means embracing that same type of a mindset that encourages creativity and experimentation and be bold so that you can develop new things and improve situations, you know, fostering that, that, that growth mindset is all, you know, this shifting mindset is such a huge topic. I mean, it, it covers everything. From, from creativity and a willingness to learn to facing your challenges, like you were saying. I mean, it really is something really, really big. And if you can adapt yourself to be able to shift a mindset, you need to do that first of all or foremost. Be able to do that by knowing inside where you're at and where you want to be and engaging the difference and saying, okay, I'm here now. This may not be where I want to be. How do I get over here? You shift that mindset and that focus in that direction and you take it one step at a time. Or like they say, how do you eat the elephant? <laughs> one bite at the time. So I'll, I'll turn it back over to you and yeah. we'll just continue. Sure. So Jean mentioned uh, self-compassion, being kind to herself instead of just 
letting it absorb the, all of the stress and negativity. Um, so for self-compassion, if you want to expand on that, Jimmy, then um, all, all the time learning, continuous learning, like breathing technique, meditation. So if you would elaborate on that, please. Absolutely. Um, well, self-compassion is, um, you know, being patient with ourselves, uh, knowing when we need our support system around us, knowing like, you know, it. I knew that I could, you know, even if I had a crazy day, that I could come here with the two of you and know that my energy would be would be healed just by your presence, by your friendship and your love, right? So if we know that we have people like this in our lives, then we can go to them just as on a regular basis to get that support. Because sometimes, you know, maybe in immediate family or maybe a work environment, we don't get that same kind of support and feeling. So if we just, all you need is one person. We're blessed to have hundreds, hundreds and thousands in on passive, right? But <clears throat> pardon me. So that is key. Knowing who, who lifts your energy, who brings you to a state of calmness and spend as much time as possible with them. That's, that's number one. And the other one about learning continuously. Um, for me, it's, it's just say you're, um, your mind is racing on in, in the wrong direction. Maybe you're worrying about something or stressing about something. If you are focused always on learning something new, going, I'm a forever student, right? I'm always one, I'm on a YouTube video or I'm reading a book or I'm doing this. I just, I, it's hard for me to not be learning new things because when I'm not, it just sort of, I sort of constrict and I feel like I'm not growing, I'm not expanding. So if we're constantly doing that, engaging the mind and 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 focusing on something that's going to move us forward in some way, maybe a topic of interest, maybe a hobby, maybe just something interest, interesting about a particular industry like AI or technology or, or anything, history, art. Um, if we're constantly doing that, then it pulls our mind away from the worry. So it's another way, it's sort of another way of saying shifting mindset. You're shifting your mind. You're saying, I'm going to move away from focusing on this thing that is bringing my energy down. It's not productive. I'm worrying about something I have no control over. And I'm shifting over to something that brings me joy, that expands my mind, that brings me peace. It, it could be any number of things, but always something that is new expanding new neural pathways in the brain, just anything new. I, I I love languages. So I'm always, I have a Arabic word of the day that comes into my email. So I know every single day I, I get a word and I try and pronounce it first. And then I hit the little link that tells me how I did. <laughs> you know, there's so many, so many ways that we can just be doing simple things. And if we just do a little bit every day, not only will it keep our minds active and uh, healthy, but it will keep us fo our focus away from non-productive things, which is worry and stress, fears, all of that, and onto something positive. And we get to choose what that is. It can be something, it doesn't, it, it, believe me, if it's something that's boring or stressful or constricting in any way, it's the wrong topic. We <laughs> should be spending our time. I I'm somebody that feels that, the divine speaks to us through our joy, our energy. If our energy picks up on certain topics um, or if we just feel just so happy, that to me is where our focus should be going, that we're put on this earth to follow those flows. And if everybody is doing that kind of, we'll all be happier. We'll all be um, learning more, growing more and all of that. So uh, that's just a couple things on, on that topic. And I, I hope that was helpful. Sure, Thank absolutely. You. So, uh, you mentioned um, wow. I've heard in a in a inspirational lecture, Jeff and Jane, that it takes the same energy to stay anxious and have anxiety as to shift it to excitement and thinking, "What if I'm wrong?" Oh, and expecting something good. Um, so that takes a specific discipline in under such a stressful situation that we go through. 
It takes a specific resilience and discipline to meditate for one minute. That seems to be so sometimes impossible. Well, what do you say to that, Jeff? Well, I think you're right. I think it's a lot more productive to be uh, positive minded and shift over into a, a positivity. Um, it, it certainly allows much more. Uh, I think that Jean kind of kind of hit the nail on the head when she said, you know, when I'm when I'm feeling a certain way that I know I need to get out of and shift my mind, I feel constricted because when we have these negative emotions, we have negative ideas and negative thoughts. That's a constricting energy. That is not a unifying. That's a dividing energy. That 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 separates. That constricts. It, it makes you draw in and become smaller. When you have the opposite of that, and you find that you're in a creative state, or your energy, or the passion, like Gene was saying, you know, I get something that gets me excited, that gets me jazzed up. Well, <clears throat> that's what we talk about when we say, "Hey, go follow your passion," because when you're following your passion, is it just means when something excites you. Like you've heard me say, on oh, man, that really jazzes me up. That means I'm excited about it. And that's just God's way or the universe's way or all that is or however you want to, whatever title you put on God. He's, he, she, when you get jazzed up, that's, that's, that's God saying, here's your path. This is your next step. Do this and you're going to end up. And if you continually follow one step after another, another, another with these high energies, you're going to end up being the best version of yourself that you can. And when we do all those little things that help us, right, following all this passion and those sorts of things, that is exactly the, the, the topic that we started off on here, which was self compassion. Doing those things is being compassionate to yourself and understanding. And I think in, in a a broad sense, we need to also understand that self-compassion is not uh, self-pity or making excuses for ourselves, but rather it's us being supportive and nurturing with the with right attitude towards ourselves as we navigate challenges. That We don't beat ourselves up over them. We just go, okay, you know, like Gene was saying, I see that my mind is right here and, and therefore I need to I need to shift it over because this is not where I want to be, and you're being kind to yourself and realizing you know what, we live in a, a universal uh, a polarity a universe where there's two extremes. Every stick you pick up has got two different ends to it. So, as a person, as a human, as as an entity, the consciousness, I can feel elated or I can feel down in the dumps and shameful and guilty and somewhere I'm always in between those. But being kind to ourselves and understanding that we are human and that's that's the nature of life. That's what we want to do, you know, and a lot of these things in in uh, developing a self-compassion for ourselves. We're talking, you know, practice that mindfulness that Gene was talking about, knowing where you are and when you're there and, and how to take a step to go to where you want to be and to treat yourself with kindness. I mean, that's self-compassion is being loving and kindness kind uh kind to yourself embracing our imperfections if you will you know reassure yourself yeah you know what eh, i might have gone off track might be off kilter didn't stay in my lane screwed this up whatever you want to call it but be kind to yourself and just say hey i'm going to reassure myself because i know that i'm human i'm out to do the right thing and i can refocus and i can do that i can practice self-care you know and i can reframe like like Gene was uh, alluding to a little bit ago, the challenge that we have, reframe those in the right mindset. So yeah, self-compassion is huge and it's a beautiful thing to do for yourself. Uh, it's almost right. absolutely necessary. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. So uh, when it comes to, we've always had, I mean, randomly, days back, nothing, absolutely nothing goes according to what we plan. And there are days that just everything one after another goes wrong. So in the middle of that, with learning process that Jean was talking about, with all of these resources, lectures, seminars, YouTubes that are in our dispense, if we can learn to, to develop determination and discipline, and then they talk about self-reflecting. So Jean, self-reflecting, how do you think that can help to give us feedback and how do you explain that reflecting? Reflecting. Reflecting. Yeah. Um, 
Well, I think it's it's being self-aware. No, as Jeffrey was talking about, when you're aware that you're not at your best, say, as an example, like just um, you're you're having a day where you're say irritable or you know, st uh, stubbing your toe all the time, or think like you said, things are going wrong, wrong, wrong. You know your energy's in the in in a non-productive place. So if you can stop and say, where where are my feelings right now? It's just sort of taking that time to say, okay, where am I angry? Am I sad? Am I uh, irritable? Am I whatever it is? And then you sort of uh, accept that and say, how can I get to a slightly higher place? We're not gonna go from depression to utter joy in a, in a split second, not usually. Um, so we say, okay, I'm going to just, how can I feel a little bit better? And when I talk to people, um, especially with my, my daughter, even it's <clears throat> sometimes when you talk to somebody and you try and help them come out of that kind of a feeling, it, they're not in a place to hear what you're saying. So it doesn't work. So, so what I try to say is just find one thing that that feels better one small thing for me it's almost always a pet i i just thinking about a pet they don't have a lot of emotional baggage there's all the you know something just anything that doesn't have any kind of tension or anything think of it be with it and my dog is sitting right over here i'm looking at her um find some small joy or something to be grateful for something as simple as I have clothes to wear today. I ate today. I have fresh water that I can get anytime I need it. These are huge things, really huge things for many, many, many people in the world. And some don't have any of those things and they struggle daily. So if we're having a particularly uh, tough day, it does shift the mind and and help to reflect on, on where we are. And usually if I'm feeling uh, lesser than, it's usually because I'm not being grateful enough for what I have. And if I can just shift that, find some small thing and then more things. And then pretty much, you know, some people keep a gratitude journal. I'm terrible about that kind of thing. As much as I love writing, I'm awful about it. I, if I do sit to do it, I, I just bliss out. You start writing the things that you're grateful for. And that list is long and it goes on forever and you just can't help smiling. So whatever works for you, if we self-reflect and say, I'm not in a good place right now, what can I do? What small steps you usually got to be small steps looking for little, um, uh, I think Jeffrey had said this, like uh, looking at learning opportunities as um, or or failures as learning opportunities and celebrating progress, things like that. Look for those little things like to say if you have a thing with clutter, you're right. If you clean a small space and you get that feeling of having accomplished that, it's those small things that can really shift your energy. And then, and then the next moment will be a little bit better and, and then on and on and on. So for me, self-reflecting saying, where is my energy? What am I bringing right now? And if it's not where you want it to be, you just find something small to shift you a little higher and a little higher and a little higher. Mm -hmm. That's Beautiful. just one, one small tool. Yeah. Thank so uh, that takes also the discipline to remember to think about all the blessings that you have. So it shifts you to a better place. Um, seeing the good in things and seeing the good in people, Jeff, seem to be not an easy thing sometimes, despite all the wrongdoing that you've seen, been done. Um, so that really, um, in the face of challenge, how do you explain self-reflecting when it comes to that? I think I missed your question. What What are you okay, asking? Okay, so um, <clears throat> it takes a discipline to ground yourself and see the good in the middle of a chaos. And it takes a discipline, right? To um, How do you reflect on, um, in the face gotcha. of uh, seeing so much challenge, how do you reflect? Uh, yeah, well, 
the way that we do that and what we're talking about, okay, that's why this whole mindset uh, shifting uh, topic is so immense. I mean, because it literally covers everything that we're talking about. And when you start talking about how do we overcome and how do we go from one to another, that is on that self-reflection, the same reflection that Gene was just talking about, where you think, okay, inside, this is how I'm feeling. This is what I'm, what I'm, what I'm going with. This is how my gut is. You know, I either like that and I'm heading in that path or I really don't. So now I need to shift it. But all of that is inclusive of you reflecting on yourself. It's a self-reflection, which is uh, regularly examining your thoughts, uh, your feelings, right? Taking time to understand why do I feel this way and what is it that's motivating me? Uh, identifying your strengths and your weaknesses in this saying, okay, you know, I, I should probably stay away from this, this side of it because I know I'm not really good at that. You know, and a, and a part of this is also back to that that self compassion thinking. I may not be good at that, but I'm good at this. So don't beat yourself over. Just recognize it in an objective way. You know, analyze the experiences as you go through them, so to speak, and that's going to allow you to really get into a very serious kind of a self reflection uh, attitude for changing whatever you want to. Uh, again, we we had mentioned mindfulness practicing practicing that. You had you had talked about what some some people do, and you know they they do all sorts of things. Um, self assessments, the online things that you can go and take tests. I did one a personality test came out the other day. I was, uh, what was I? I was some sort of an artist or something, and I thought, well, that's weird since I'm not I don't consider myself an artist, but it gave me an insight to myself and helped me. You know, some people write, uh, some people journal. Uh, there's lots of things that we can do. But I, I think probably the take home is when you're looking at you and your personal actions, be truthful to who you are and be understanding with yourself and make some good choices in in, in the whole gambit of things. Don't just go, oh, I didn't like that and just jump onto something else because you'll find yourself in trouble. But that that's about it. Self-reflection is a wonderful tool and we, and we need to do it. Thank you. It also brings us to being uh, willing to being open to change, right? Being open to change and uh, stopping the self -limit limiting thoughts. And last week, Jean mentioned, like when you look in the mirror, say, I <laughs> love you. So start from that first thing in the morning and plan your day the way you want it. And play in your mind how you want things to flow, much like tuning an instrument before you go on the stage and start playing. Oh, wow. I like right? that. So then uh, being open to uh, constructive feedback. Wait, when it comes to how do you, do you get your feedback from yourself or how do you seek feedback for self-improvement? I know you always get asking me. You asking me? Sure. Yes. Yeah. If you have something to add to it, wonderful. Yeah. I. Uh, it's funny because I was thinking about this, and my first thought was, well, if you want feedback or constructive feedback on something, you know, like you know, how is my speaking voice, or how is this piece of writing that I wrote, or something, you could ask a friend. However, maybe a friend is not the one that would give the best constructive feedback, right? So you really have to say, okay, what is it that I'm asking for? And, and then pick the right audience, right? You like say, I would go to Jeffrey if I was uh, writing something and I needed a writer's eye. And Jeffrey, I do consider writing an art. So you are an artist, right? So and you're an artist in many different ways, the creative way that you think. So don't sell yourself short. But if you go to people that, if you're looking for constructive feedback, like how did I do speaking on that? Was like me new, I'll go to you. Was my, were my thoughts clear? Did I come across the right way? If, if I feel like sometimes I'll speak and I don't remember anything that I said. And I could look at that two ways. I could say, oh, I was going with the flow or I was, uh, I don't know, you know, but sometimes I wonder, but you don't want to go. And this is the, the, the warning is you don't want to go to someone that may, it, unless your energy is in the right space. So if you 
are very delicate or about something and you're very nervous about it to say I painted something or whatever, I would go to someone that had the background on it and could give me really objective feedback as opposed to someone whose opinion, if it wasn't what I wanted, would hurt me. Does that make sense? Uh, yeah, if the person like, is biased, they don't want to hurt yes, your and Exactly. So you one, you have to be in a strong place. If you're really looking for constructive feedback, you got to be willing to accept it. That's number one. And then you got to choose the right people that will give it to you. Like it's a trust thing. Will they give me an honest answer? And will they also be, um, uh, what's the word? Uh, 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 I, not sure the word that I'm looking for, but they will give you valuable feedback for the topic as opposed to personal opinion mm -hmm. or that kind of thing, which is not as helpful and could be hurtful. So like constructive it's, it's, criticism. It's like, yeah, so you 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 just seek out the ones that you know will give you feedback that you can really grow from, and uh, and that's that's probably maybe a lifelong journey. It might not be your immediate family, it might be a total stranger, you know. But but so seeking that out uh, if we feel stagnant on any kind of thing, um, it's it's just always good. But you can also just go to experts on YouTube, you know. Like if I just say. <laughs> I want to dress better or whatever. There's a million experts online and I can pick the one that resonates with me. So you can pick the that on any topic, even language. I can pick the person who is teaching that language that feels comfortable to me. I like the sound of their voice. I like the pronunciation. I understand. And every time I watch a video, I get, I get, uh, good information so anyway there are experts out there that you could in a lot of a lot of ways you can reach out and communicate with them and you can get feedback from them as well so there's the world is filled with um people just just waiting to give you feedback we give you feedback <laughs> right. say, pick and choose wisely is what i would i would suggest hmm. um jeff i was studying about the power of silence when it comes to self-discipline and reflecting upon yourself this is what I read. Silence is often underestimated in our fast-paced, noise-filled world, but its power is self in self-development is profound. Like um, in silence, our minds have the opportunity to rest and rejuvenate. Um, constant stimulation can lead to mental fatigue, they say. But moments of quiet allow us uh, allow our cognitive processes to rest, improving our overall mental health and clarity. So can you elaborate on the power of silence when it comes to self-development? Uh, yeah, I think so. Uh, when we talk about, at least this is, this is my take on it, when we talk about the power of silence, we're referring to a uh, uh, the impact, a significant impact that silence can have on not only us, but individuals, uh, other individuals, situations, uh, even relationships and such. Um, there are certain times when, when if we're just silent, then we're conveying uh, either understanding or empathy, uh, respect, even um, compassion, you know, without words, we're still showing and uh, I think, Gene, you would agree that in that silence, what we're actually doing is sending out this compassionate energy or this this energy of understanding. And um, silence can be huge for that. Uh, in 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 being silent, sometimes we encourage uh, self reflection, like we had, we talked about, or uh, introspectively, you know, looking at us and our emotions and our thoughts. Uh, a lot of times, silence can be used as a, uh, a differential or uh, to uh, defer attention or uh, a, 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 a moment of conflict. You know, you get people that are, you know, just be quiet for a minute and just get, gather your thoughts. Uh, you can make uh, tense situations into, into calmer ones, you know, reduce the stress. Uh, 
Silence also allows you to be able to go inside. You know, uh, it, it helps you to promote an active listening even and fosters creativity and um, sometimes just, just being silent at the right time can, can build trust and a rapport with people. So there's a lot of things to be said about silence, but I think one of the things I love about silence, and, and to me, when I mention silence, it's coupled with being still. Um, you know, e even biblically speaking, you know, in the scripture, you know, God has said, or Jesus has said more than once, you know, be still and know that I am, or, or be still, peace, be still. A lot of times he's talking about, be quiet for a minute and let your inside tell you a little something. And that's exactly where I go with it is when you go into a meditative state or when you want to just quiet yourself and get still, that's when you can really pay attention to um, your your intuition and even your, your higher self voice. So a lot of times silence can speak louder than words too. So it's very, very important and we can use it for a variety of things. So thank you. I appreciate that question. Beautiful. That was kind of cool. Right. So um, being silent helps staying in the present moment, as you explained, um, helps us... Um, respond as Jean said versus react because mm -hmm. we just reflect on what we want to say think about it before you say it right um it helps with the spiritual the spiritual connection as you said like connecting us to higher power grounding us right and um uh, being able to connect at a higher level and uh, more calculated, respond right would that be the same as bringing the brain level to the lower level like those alpha beta and all of that because then you can become more creative as you're silent and... well okay. obviously if you're in yeah i mean if you're in an excited state and it's not a good excited state then a little bit of silence and introflection or, or self-reflection can certainly lower your brainwave state if that's what you're saying. But yeah, you, you want to go from that that high beta, probably down to beta or even alpha. <laughs> so that comes back to discipline again, because that takes that's not easier said than done, right? It takes a determination and discipline and practice. And learning and staying in tune with that kind of discipline on a regular basis. You can't just uh, do it one day and say, I'm set. It's much like driving that every time you sit at the wheel, you have to pay attention. Right? Yeah. You just have yeah. to be in tune. If you like to add to that, Jean, I would love to hear that. I, I do. I, you know, when you say discipline, a lot of, a lot of people might um be intimidated by the word discipline it applies waking at 4 a.m drop and give me 20 you know do doing this and, do, and they're just like a dis a, when i think of discipline i think of like uh when i was in track or, or in scouts or something like that the those things so for me it's it's almost like self-awareness which is a constant state so it's like instead of a uh, I got to remember to do this. If we're just sort of in this state of self-awareness, we're going to know, we're going to feel that intuition. We're going to have those moments of silence where we're much more in tune, like Jeffrey said, with our higher self, making better decisions. Um, I, I think, you know, I'm an introvert. So if I don't get enough silence myself, I implode. Like really like I, I, uh, the worst aspects of my personality come out if I don't have enough time completely alone, which is hard because I have a dog too, but, but, but just being very, very quiet. I, I need an extra dose of that more than the average bear. Let's put it that way. You know, so, so if I can stay self-aware, it's, it doesn't scare me as much as, um, discipline because I feel like even though I have a history of having had moments of great discipline I feel like that's not my strong suit so instead of intimidating myself and and setting myself up for failure by saying I need to be more disciplined I I'll choose a different word of, of self-awareness which is a it's an a constant thing 
So it, it's sort of a built-in discipline of always being mindful of my, uh, my energy, my feeling, it's because that's how, as Jeffrey said, that, that the, uh, the universe speaks, speaks to us and nudges us and says, maybe that's not the direction that's the best for you in this moment. Maybe you can shift over to this one. You know, we're always getting those nudges, but unless you quiet your mind, you're not going to hear it. The still small voice. And sometimes it's right. so subtle. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes it's not. I'll knock you over. If you don't hear the the still small voice, it gets louder and louder. And then it'll bonk you over the head. But uh, I'm grateful for the bonks when I need when I when I really need to be bonked on the head. I'm grateful yeah. for it. But it's always best if you can hear the subtle. Be still. I love that. That's one of my favorite Being scriptures. Still. Right. Be still and know that I am mm. God. You know, be just calm yourself. Yeah. Right. Calm and yourself. So Jane, well, this, hey, can, uh, I, can what, I pick up where she was on that same topic? Is that all right? Because that's a very good topic. She brought up something very, very good that I have experienced more times than not in the last few months, even just talking with fellow on passivians and those sorts of things were discipline. And I specifically speak about discipline. And, and I tell folks sometimes, you're not disciplined enough. We need more discipline. You need more. And discipline is often misunderstood as a, a negative thing, a negative concept, because we've grown up normally associating discipline and punishment with restriction, right? And control and those sorts of things. So we're programmed against that word. We're like, no, no discipline. No, right? don't want that. However, true discipline is a power and a power, to, it's, 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 a, it's a positive force, powerful force that can be used for a lot of different things. I mean, uh, you talked about self-control, a goal achievement, um, freedom even. Uh, what else? Confidence building, making better habits. I mean, Lots of stuff. It's not a bad word. It's a good word. And through discipline, we can reduce stress, give ourselves more empowerment, you know, more self-love, all that stuff. So I just wanted to throw that in there. Right. Absolutely. So I'm so glad you added that, Jeffrey. I, I was implying that the people just have that sort of mental thing about the word discipline. And I'm so yeah. glad you added the positives of it because it is so positive when we can incorporate it. Thank you. Well, you know, we can... Program for so many things. Yeah, sounds like uh, practicing silence uh, is good for our health and well-being. It's like uh, promoting tranquility, and another way for stress management, as you mentioned, and calming down our central nervous system. So, it could be just another way to meditate, or could meditation is silent too. Yeah. Yeah. Silence and stillness. When you get quiet inside and you calm your body so it's nice and still, that's the first step into a good, fruitful meditation or meditative state where you can hear your inner voice and you can go inward. So, yeah, Gene, you might want to, you're better at talking about that than I, I think I am. <laughs> no, I, I feel like you, you just said it. If we can, and if we can just get ourselves into that calm state. And I think Ash, Mufara is so good at this. You can see when he comes into a meeting and he has every once in a while, you'll see him get playful and, and, and you can tell his energy is a little slightly different, you know, his, his sense of humor is a little different, but generally he is coming into those meetings from a place of calm confidence. You can just, he has mastered his energy in my opinion. And from that, he is able to create really good things and so it's it's it it behooves us to try and master that that stillness that calm because it has you know as you said Minu, that has a physical positive effect on us it has a mental obviously a mental and and creativity standpoint so it's just it's a goal and then you know and incorporating all those the the disciplines that jeffrey was talking about we can add in healthy eating more water activity um, you know, all of these things, you know, sticking to routines, if that's what works so that you, you accomplish every day, you accomplish things like, like some people will say it's a military thing, but making your bed every day so that every day you have, you wake up and you have, you have succeeded from the get-go. 
or some mm -hmm. people will make sure there are no dirty dishes in their sink. There, be, there are a lot of different ways. And each one of those, they're like a discipline. They are a, a way to do something on a consistent basis that brings positive reinforcement into our lives, makes us feel better. You look at a made bed and it feels, it is, ha, ah, if I did nothing else good today, I did that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. It's the simple things. I'm telling you, it's like when life is in chaos and I think we can all agree that there, there's so much going on in the world, we need to find those oases, you know, an oasis in our life that is still and peaceful and joyful and productive and all of those things. And if we can just add as much of that into our daily lives as possible, we'll be on the right road. So, um, so, yeah. Uh, sounds like incorporating a little bit of periods of silence in a daily life could be actually transformative. And that could be done through either meditation or um, just unplugging from technology sometimes. Amen. That would, it's amazing how much time you have when you're not on the phone all the time. <laughs> <to> <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Speaking from personal experience. And, social um, media, yeah. Right. So bringing that all to the topic of um, embracing challenges, um, those are all tools and techniques to embrace challenges. And then you mentioned something, Jane, about um, seeing um something bad that happens to you it's about a, a learning process looking at it that way and um it's easy to practice that in my my personal experience at work when i'm facing like a challenging patient or a situation i've been practicing that ever since i joined to on passive and listening learning from the best here so i think we can incorporate all of this material that we cover in daily life and i don't think there is such thing as oh we're stressing it or recovering it it's all over the place why do you even talk about it because it makes a difference when jeff and gene in on passive talk about it. it's different because you know on passive group now are listening and somebody may take that you know it may resonate with them um so i appreciate that um you could add anything for closing each one of you, uh, if you like. I just wanted to add really quickly, Minu, is is it's it's so true. And Marty talks about this, where sometimes topics, it, it's helpful to have them repeated by multiple speakers over time, because you never know what one turn of phrase might be the exact words or 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 voice or something that someone needs in order to hear the message and so if it's always coming from one kind of speaker or one kind of um, energy or uh, one way of saying something it doesn't have as many opportunities to help people so it does help to have these conversations on a, a regular basis so uh, because the whole goal here is to help people, we're not here to hear our voices and, and chat amongst ourselves. We're here to provide something that somebody on the outside might be having a challenging day like like I had before coming on here. You know, you have and it really in the grand scheme of things, not challenging, but stressful to say stressful. And the and so now these are tools that anybody, including myself, can now use these so that the next time I'm, I encounter some kind of challenge, I will learn about, I will, I will use the tools, I will breathe, I will get into a place of stillness, I'll take a moment to gather myself, I'll learn something from it. I'll learn, maybe, maybe I'll just learn that I, I still have a lot of work to do with patience or, or being kind or, or whatever. It's, it's always a way for us to learn and grow and then the next time we talk about these topics, we'll have even more information to give from our new perspective and and from our own learning. And um, so, yeah, that's all I wanted to add. Um, Thank you. You know, I also, uh, something that I have been finding helpful is listening to on my way to work to, to those 
positive affirmation uh, YouTube that is uh, very helpful. It helps you align with you know tranquility and with the universe, and it's very relaxing. I found that so that might be something that we all can use. Um, so Jeff, also, um, how about celebrating progress? Would that help for our step? Discipline, celebrating progress a step at a time, like Jean said, breaking it into Absolutely. small steps. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, when you talk about embracing challenges and, you know, the, the, the things that we're talking about here today and pushing boundaries. And obviously, anytime we do anything like this, it's going to run the gambit, you know. And if you end up on the negative side of things where you really don't feel good about it, use some of the things we talked about today to shift your mindset into something and, and head down the road to where your passion is, you know, so we can set some pretty bold goals and take calculated risks, you know, there's going to be uncertainty, right? But in all of this, no matter what you're doing, you can celebrate it. And that certainly means when you are making progress and you are doing good things and the whole process is working out like you want it to, obviously you want to celebrate that. But you also want to celebrate the little things, even if it's a small thing that may have caused you a little bit of pain, you want to be able to celebrate, hey, I saw that, I recognize it, I knew how to change it, I changed it, it was that, it is this, hallelujah, I'm on my way. So yeah, celebration is big. Um, in, in developing a growth mindset, that in itself is a celebration of sorts, because we're learning from our failures, we're seeking new challenges, I mean, we're developing resilience, and all of these things, every one of them, and I think you'd both agree, all the things we talked about today, we can see uh, exude, emanated uh, out of Mr. Mufar with On Passive. And it hasn't been easy for him, but absolutely. Celebrate, celebrate, celebrate. Thanks. Right. And so this session, Jeff and Jean, feels like the raising of my vibrational level personally talk, listening to you guys covering this subject. And it seems like we have such a huge armamentarium of tools to use to improve our spirituality, our everyday life. And um, I'm glad that you're doing this with me. And I uh, hope that we do more of this. I hope everybody, you, you find this as, as um, exuberating as I did. And I hope that we we'll soon cover more of this kind of material. We love you and until we meet again, bye-bye.